Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst with Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on silver and on gold uh, and copper exploration and development today. We'll hear from Marshall Koval, CEO and director, and Scott Hicks, VP of Corporate Development of Luminex Resources Corp. During today's webinar, they will provide an overview and outlook. Then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time and we'll get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first we need to discuss the fine print. During this Luminex webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the Luminex corporate presentation. That can be found on the company's website, luminexresources.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. And please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on Luminex. We have Luminex presenting today. The company is focused on exploration and development of gold and copper projects in Ecuador. The most advanced is the Condor project, and they also have several exploration targets that are currently active. With that, I now turn it over to Marshall and Scott to update our audience on the company. Thanks a lot, Tim, and thanks for everybody for joining us today. Um, yeah, Luminex, we have a lot of moving parts here. We've talked to uh, Red Cloud investors for or followers for quite a long time here. Uh, we'll give a corporate update kind of where we're at today. We're advancing a portfolio of large scale exploration properties in Ecuador. Here's the forward looking statement. So when you look at uh, what's in the, the Luminex company, you know, we have gold and copper assets. We have three world class partners in Ecuador. Luminex itself, we're advancing the Condor project. It has 6.6 .6 million ounces of contained gold. We did a PEA on Condor North uh, last year, and it has a 387 million NPV at 5% discount rate, 187,000 ounces of uh, gold per annum production in that PEA, and a 12-year mine life. What we're doing now in and around the PEA area, we're doing some exploration work and drilling that we can get into here in a bit later, um, trying to enhance some of the um, potential targets around the area. We had a press release that came out on a high grade uh, Los Cuyas um, area hole. Uh, we can show you a little bit on that. That gives us a second potential underground target besides the camp zone, which is part of the PEA. Also, we have the uh, Cascas project that we're operating um, ourselves. And then we have our joint venture partners, the earnings with BHP at Tarkey, they're currently drilling a 5,000 meter drilling program, spending about uh, 42 million US to earn in 60% if they exercise the option. And then Anglo American at our Pegasus project, uh, this is our largest land package in the country. And these are porphyry uh, copper deposits, both BHP, Anglo and Jogmec here. But Anglo can, uh, is planning on a 5,000 meter drilling program uh, sort of mid 2022 and they can spend 57 million to earn in 60 percent and then jogmec we're currently drilling there we're operating that for jogmec uh, we're on our third hole now and they can spend seven million to earn 70 percent at uh, the orchidius project so basically in the copper space here this is non-dilutive um, from an equity perspective and, and quite a bit of work going on now and hopefully we'll have drill results here, and, and these are early stage exploration copper assets. So thanks go ahead, summary. Scott. Yeah, thanks for the summary there. Um, so just, you know, on uh, on the snapshot of the company, we, we've got about 109 million shares outstanding right now. Uh, you know, Ross Beattie is the, the founder of the Lumina Group, and he holds 20% of the company, and management holds around 6%. Uh, we have a great group of Ecuadorian investors that typically invests every round with us. Um, you know, they, they're about 14%. Then we have Route 1 out of San Francisco, which holds about 11% of the company. And then some other U.S. and European funds that hold another 10%. Um, you know, the cash balance you're seeing here is a little bit dated. It's our last financials, which was September. 
Uh, we did announce uh, a financing aftermarket close yesterday. You can find the details for that on our website, but uh, we are attempting to raise uh, $8 million Canadian right now to fund uh, drilling at Condor uh, through the balance of 2022. So just, um, you know, on, on Ecuador and, 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 you know, I know a lot of you are familiar with Ecuador, but, um, you know, the, the thing we continue to see here is just increased levels of engagement from the government. And, you know, we, we met with Lasso, uh, the new president, uh, several times over the last uh, year. And, you know, he really wants to see a lot of responsible mining get developed and come into play in country during his first and, and potentially second term. Um, to, to bring more to the economy on that front. And Marshall, why don't you talk about, you know, a little bit of what's going on there right now and, and you know, the, the trips you've had and the trip you're planning next week. Yeah, I'm headed down to uh, Ecuador on Monday and, and have meetings with a lot of Lasso's ministries uh, looking at uh, what we can do within the country, looking at both Lumina Gold and Luminex and, and how we can work with the government to support the development of the mining sector. Obviously, from a geologic perspective, Ecuador has not been systematically explored, so there's a real high potential for discovery. And we went into the country in 2014, and, and fast forward to today, the government uh, had a, a fairly punitive uh, fiscal regime back then, and they've done quite a bit through subsequent administrations, including losses to get rid of the windfall profit tax, lower, lower the royalty range, you get VAT back. And, you know, right now mining is about 4% of the GDP of the country. Um, if you go back to uh, pre the Fruta del Norte and Mirador mine being built, uh, it was less than 1%. So what Lasso would like to see is that to grow even more. Um, if you look at the region where Mirador and Fruta del Norte is in Zamora Chinchipe area there. The, uh, the GDP of those provinces has been some of the highest in the country. So, you know, Ecuador has oil, they have agriculture, tourism, and mining kind of as the, the cornerstones of the economy that uh, Lasso is trying to move forward. And in the mining sector, he's really pushed this responsible mining theme, and they're doing a lot to eradicate illegal mining. And the idea is to bring in more uh, foreign direct investment. So you can kind of see this uh, on this slide here, BHP, Anglo, Newcrest, Fortescue, Franco, Wheaton, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of interest in the country. So I think basically we'll see uh, Lasso government try to improve the investment uh, regime within the country to make the country more attractive. So, so just where, where our specific projects are, and I appreciate this is a small map here, we'll, we'll zoom in, but uh, you know, aside from the angle partnership in the center of the country there, everything we have is really focused along trend with, uh, you know, Mirador and Fruta del Norte, the two mines Marshall just meant that, or mentioned that have been constructed. Um, and, you know, when you zoom in on that area here, just kind of going from the top to bottom. Uh, Tarkey's where we have our partnership with BHP. That's where they're drilling with two rigs right now on a copper project. Uh, Kimmy, we own 100% of. Uh, you've got the Mirador mine just below that. And then uh, Fruits' concessions go all the way down to the northern edge of Condor. And then their JV with Newcrest picks up again in the south. And then just a little bit to the west there in blue, we've got Orchidius, which is where we're drilling with one rig, a 2,500 meter program with Jogmec right now. And then you've got our Cascus concession, which we have a, a copper exploration target on down in the south. So this area is a very busy area of Ecuador. It's where most of the capital mining has been invested in the last uh, five, six years. And we certainly think we're in the right area of the country for development. Um, you know, just moving on to Condor itself, you know, when we picked this up, it had about 100,000 meters of drilling. That was in 2016. As a management team, we've drilled about 35,000 meters here. Um, we've discovered the new camp underground target during that time. And, you know, we've also improved our ownership stake in the asset. We, when we got it in 2016, we own 90%. Right now, we own 98.7% of the project. So, you know, that's also been a, a recent improvement uh, to the Condor project. And as Marshall mentioned, you know, we're sitting with 6.6 .6 million ounces of gold there. And really that's spread into, you know, multiple areas. Um, in the north, you've got, um, 
what we call Condor North, and that's four deposits. Uh, so you've got Los Cuyas, Soledad, and Enma that are open pits, and you've got the camp deposit, which is an underground higher grade target. So camp's about three and a half grams per ton, and that's about 10% of the feed for the PEA. And then you've got Cuyas, Soledad, and Enma bringing 90% from pits uh, that are kind of between 0.6 and 0.8 grams per ton on the gold side there. And then in the center, um, you've got Santa Barbara as an existing resource. That's about, you know, three and a half million ounces of gold there. It's about 0.5 on the gold, 0.1 on the copper. That's not included in the PEA numbers that we'll walk you through. Um, but uh, that, that is a resource that we have on the property. And then, you know, there's some new areas that we're looking to drill um, in the next uh, nine months here. So we've got Permitted Thor, which we think could be a satellite to this Condor North PEA area. And we've got some exciting copper prospects that are starting to shape up here in the El Hito, uh, one Winsaw Alta area that we'll uh, talk about in a second. So that's kind of uh, a quick overview of the property. And then, you know, just um, on the PEA side of things. So this was really a first step for us in showing how the four deposits would work together. So right now you've got a 12 year mine life project with an underground and open pit component. Uh, it's about 190,000 ounces of production over the 12 years on average. The early years when you have the underground from camp, you know, you get over 200,000 ounces, about 220,000 ounces a year. Um, the, the underground fades out in year eight. And that's why the Los Cuyas area that we'll talk about in a second here is pretty important that we, we just discovered uh, recently. So that might add to the underground life. The capital to build this project is about $600 million uh, for a 25,000 ton per day facility. You know, we'll, we're gonna be constantly evaluating the scale of facility that's right here. Um, if we find, you know, more underground, there's an opportunity to perhaps shrink that throughput in that facility, um, reduce that upfront capital. And we're, we're looking at things in that uh, respect right now. On the cost side here at $840 an ounce all in sustaining cost, it's, it's pretty attractive. Um, you've got a reasonable strip ratio at the project. You've got cheap hydropower and cheap diesel in Ecuador. So all of that's helping you on the cost side of things. Um, Marshall, do you want to talk about kind of some of the test work we've done and, and the mine planning work that you guys did to put into the PEA? Yeah, so basically what uh, we're looking at in the PEA from the mine planning perspective is a 2,500 ton per day underground operation at the camp zone. It's up on a ridge, so it's it's really easy to get underground access there. And simultaneously, we would open up the Los Cuyas and, and Soledad pits, and um, that would account for the, the balance of the feed, uh, you know, 22,500. Low strip ratio, it's sort of... Uh, roughly two to one in the open pits. And the recoveries are really good, you know, sort of 90% uh, plus uh, gold recoveries for the different deposits. So basically that's kind of the high level on, um, on the mine plan and the pits and the metallurgy. So let me talk a little bit about the upside here. So in this figure, you can see the camp zone, you can see Cuyas uh, and Soledad there. There's another target along strike here, Prometador, which we're doing quite a bit of work right now and, and plan to drill this year. So that has the potential to add more to, um, to the PEA uh, resources, maybe bring in a fourth pit. Also, Scott, can you kind of point to the area just off of Los Cuyas where we had the higher grade underground uh, target that we hit recently? So right in this area, you know, we drilled um, an eight meter uh, width of about five grams per ton material, a little bit higher than five grams in, in this section here. Now, this was in the resource pit of Los Cuyas, but it wasn't, uh, there wasn't a resource recorded for it. So this is an area that we are looking at potentially doing some more drilling here in the near term. And hopefully this will be another zone similar to the camp zone where we can get near surface underground access of, of higher grade material. So that may have the potential to change the, um, the mine planning configuration that we did in the PEA and ultimately the economics of the project should we be successful here. This is the Prometador area. We've got a, a pretty solid 500 meter zone here where we have um, a lot of trenching 
channel samples, uh, rock samples, and a soil anomaly. So this is the area where we intend to uh, drill. It's in a pretty steep area where the, we've had a little bit of landslide activity, but uh, we're making our way into the area to get drill access. So hopefully be up here drilling later this year. And this is, uh, we're looking at uh, the copper uh, area that's emerging. El Ito was drilled. There's about six holes in El Ito and, and they've got some really good uh, copper intercepts. You know, uh, the one here you can see is uh, 0.44 copper over a long intercept. And basically with the work that we've done on the surface, it looks like El Ito uh, trends into Juan Witza Alto. And it's either a single uh, porphyry system or a clustered porphyry system. So we've done quite a bit of work and we're starting to develop drill targets uh, in this area as well. And we hope to be drilling this later this year. Yeah, so just on sequencing, what we're doing right now is we're moving a rig back up to Cuyas uh, that we should be able to start drilling here in the next two weeks or so. Uh, and that's gonna focus on that high grade area we were talking about. Then the same rig will probably draw, draw sorry, drill some uh, shallow uh, camp holes in and around the underground camp deposit that might add to that resource. And then while that's happening, we're gonna drive a road and access um, up past El Hito towards one Winsa Alto and then up to, um, up to Permeta Door. So we would probably drill El Hito North and then Permetador after that um, with that access. So that's kind of the current thinking for, for drilling uh, for the remainder of 2022 at Condor. And then, you know, outside of Condor, we've got Cascus to the south. Um, we've done some drilling here last year, about 2000 meters. You know, we were successful at hitting a porphyry system at Shakai. The grades were a little lower than what we'd liked, you know, between kind of 0.1 to 0.3 CUEQ, depending on the hole and the intercept. Um, we did, however, subsequently define this HAPA area uh, to the north, and that looks like a perhaps a more cohesive uh, copper target there. So we're just waiting for some trenching assays to come back on that um, target. And then in the meantime, we continue to kind of do rock and soil work down here in the south, which is actually more of a, of a gold target. So got assays pending on that just from, from rock and, and, and field work there. Um, so that's an area that we could drill um, if we elect to do so. So those are the two projects that we're working on with our money. And then in the in the background here, we've got BHP drilling at, at Tarkey. Um, as of right now, you know, they've spent about $10.4 million to December and paid us on top of that 1.1 million in cash payments. Uh, they have another half million dollar payment due um, middle of this year to us. And um, their first three holes they put out, you know, they were successful. You can see on this right hand figure that the three holes there, they, they were successful in hitting about 700 meters of porphyry from surface in all three holes. You know, the grades were, um, a little bit on the lower side, you know, 0.19 copper with Somali, 0.15 and the other two holes also with Somali. So what they're trying to do right now is two things with the two rigs they're drilling with. They're trying to vector in to see if they can find a higher uh, grade area, mainly in the north. And then they're also drilling down to the south to test the, the size of the overall porphyry system and seeing if it's a, a size that is something that's appealing to, to BHP. Sorry, Marshall, I don't know if you want to add anything there. No, I think you did a good job. And then just, um, you know, on Anglo, we've been uh, patiently waiting for these guys to start drilling for a while now, and we think they're uh, finally getting close. So sh we're expecting them to start drilling in Q3 at Pegasus A. Uh, to date, they've spent about $14 million on the project and paid us $2.4 million in cash payments. So they're actually a 25% owner now. Um, and they're working on their next uh, earn into the 51% level. The, uh, the drilling we expect them to do is on this Medusa target up in the north. They're going to do about a 5,000 meter program there to start uh, with one team. And then they're going to take a second team and look to prioritize the other kind of seven targets you see here with the black circle. So, and this is truly a massive land package. 
for those of you who follow, you know, Lumina Gold, our other project where we have 17 million ounces. I mean, this land package is five times bigger than that land package, just for context, uh, just on Pegasus A, um, not even including Pegasus B. So you know, there's lots of work to do here, um, high potential for porphyry discovery. Uh, so we're excited for them to start drilling that in Q3. And then, you know, the last, uh, sorry, this is just the uh, the Pegasus deposit in uh, in magnetics and ZTEM resistivity for, for those of you who like the geophysics out there. Um, the last project that we're drilling right now uh, with Jogmec is, is Orchidius. Um, they're doing five holes, about 500 meters uh, a piece right now. So it's a, it's a drill program that should be wrapped up by probably the end of May uh, this year. And we'll see uh, if we can, we can have some good uh, copper molly uh, discovery results from that. Um, so they're drilling some areas that hadn't previously been drilled. We, we had originally drilled this property with First Quantum back in 2019, uh, and they're testing some, some different areas on the property right now. So, you know, in, in summary, uh, we think we have an, a great base project at Condor North right now. Uh, we had a $400 million MPV. It's $1,600 gold as our baseline. You know, that's under 50% of the resource that's at the project. We think we've got, you know, four excellent drill targets that we plan to drill in, in 2022 here. Uh, you've got BHP, Anglo and Jogmec all drilling individual copper assets in the background uh, with their money and, and not uh, diluting our shareholders. And we've got some other land in the portfolio that, you know, over time will continue to try to either, uh, you know, get partnerships on or, or push along ourselves. So, um, you know, with that, maybe we'll pause and take some questions. Great. Thank you, gentlemen, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we will now start the Q&A portion of this webinar. A reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. We already do have uh, several questions um, to start. Um, could investors expect a potential JV on the Jerusalem property um, that would uh, potentially uh, tie in with Condor North? So Jerusalem is near the Chinapensa area, and it's a, a different owner uh, that has that. And basically, those are pretty narrow, uh, higher grade veins, sort of vein system. Half a meter in uh, width, and you know they run pretty good. That's not been an area of focus uh, for us. Uh, it, the scale of it's pretty small. But uh, so there's no plans at this point to uh, to look at a JV there. Um, does the West uh, Los Coyos discovery suggest the width of uh, the vertical mineral structure to be around 17.6 meters and that future drilling would be right on top of it and towards camp? So it, it's got a different orientation of camp. Uh, Camp is sort of northwest, southeast, and this is closer to a, a north-south sort of orientation. But um, basically, right now, the, the first hole, we just have one hole into it. Once we get a couple of other holes in it, we'll have a better handle on the true width. Although we drilled a fairly shallow 25-degree uh, hole into it, so we think the intercepts that were reported uh, in the news release are pretty close to the true width. So. You've got the 17 um, meters, and then you have the eight meter interval that's, you know, plus five grams material. So, you know, we're looking, whether it's 17 or eight, we're looking for that higher five gram kind of material uh, with the future drilling. So we'll drill it at depth and then a long strike is kind of the current plan. And can Luminex sign a similar investment protection agreement um, to Lumina? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to elaborate on that quickly, I mean, Lumina was the first one to ever do that in country. Uh, Soul Gold followed us shortly thereafter. And, um, you know, we would do it but uh, for Condor eventually, but it would be, probably, you know, different time scales and different quantums of investment versus what it was in Lumina. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I liked your conciseness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
this is kind of a different kind of question, but have any landslides been beneficial for geologic discovery? Yeah, it's kind of interesting in the um, in the area of Prometador, sort of between uh, Los Cuyas going up to Prometador, we have a, a trail in there. And, you know, we do all the drilling out there with man portable rigs and we use the local communities to help us mobilize. It provides jobs. So we had a trail cut in there and then we had a landslide. Uh, we've had a couple landslides and basically it's exposed more areas, but we have gone back in and sampled, you know, the landslide areas and, and there is uh, some anomalous gold in those areas. So the big thing is we really need to get into the core of that uh, area, Prometador, where we showed on the slide with the 500 meter anomalous area and drill that. I mean, it's basically drill ready at this point and uh, we just need to get our access up into that area and, and be able to logistically operate. Yeah, I mean, we've had, we have much better data on that area than we had, you know, nine months ago. And it's really, we're able to get people in there. It's just a question of whether you drive that road I was talking about from the bottom or fly in a rig and just those type of logistics. And are there any indigenous communities living on the Condor area? If so, which prospects are they near? Uh, yeah, that, that whole a lot of the area there is indigenous communities, the, the Shuar community. And, you know, we have quite a few uh, Shuar uh, community members working with us. And, and we have generally pretty decent relationships with the communities in the area. And it's a big part of us being able to do work. And it's, you know, jobs are a key thing, uh, you know, helping with education and health. And, you know, in the various areas that we're operating, uh, we have uh, individual agreements with the local communities. And, and I'm talking Tarkey, I'm, I'm talking Condor um, in El Ito and, and some of the other areas that we're working. And could some of the uh, El Hito uh, Prometador geology uh, go into Peruvian territory? If so, uh, could Luminex uh, have a plan to capture that upside? So the, uh, the El Hito deposit itself is pretty close to the border with uh, Ecuador and Peru. On the Ecuadorian side of the border, um, you can, a uh, foreign national can own property right up to the border. On the Peruvian side, um, you can't. There's a 50 meter buffer. So you'd have to, uh, if the mineralization continued on to the Peruvian side, you'd probably have to do a JV with a, a Peru, Peru based company, assuming that there was a, a potential mine that extended into Peru. But the, uh, the good news from our perspective is it looks like the um, El Hito North is trending to the to the northwest, so away, uh, slightly away from the border. Yeah, that's towards the Juan Winsa Alto area there, so. Okay. And um, there is talk of the mineral concessions reopening uh, later this year. Uh, does management have any plans for acquisitions? So, you know, it's been kind of interesting, the, the whole cadastral system and the concession system opening up, it, it's a little bit uncertain as to when when that may happen. Um, it's obviously on the radar of, of the government, but once it opens, we have obvious interests in different areas that we would pursue. Great. And I think that's all the questions we have uh, submitted uh, today. Um, I would like to again thank Marshall Koval and Scott Hicks from Luminex for presenting today. And thank you everyone on the line for tuning in today. Uh, just a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back next Tuesday afternoon when our webinar series continues with Klondike Gold presenting Tuesday, April 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks everybody. Take care.